Why did I decide to film this on the hottest day of the year so far? In bright bloody sunlight. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> you tell me. Is there something wrong with me, do you think? Probably. Mm. A couple of years ago, um, I was going to review an awning for Isabella. Uh, I was going to take it away, pump it up, use it, and see what I thought of it, and then produce a video of it. Um, since then, lots of things have happened, and there was some worldwide event that I can't remember took place. Um, when I was supposed to take the awning, it was very popular, um, and so much so that there wasn't one available for me to take away, borrow, and review. But now in 2022, on June, on the hottest day of the year so far, both Nathan and I are here together once again. Hi. Hello. And we're going to go through some of the features of the Isabella Air Cirrus 400. Some of the features, uh, he's going to talk me through some of the points, some of the pros, some of the cons of air awnings. And then I'm going to put this one down, take it away, and I'm going to use it this summer and uh, give a live-in review of it and see how I get on with it as you know as anybody would want to see so that's the plan with this awning let's talk about this air awning a bit more then mm -hmm. this is the Isabella Air Cirrus awning the fabric let's start with that yep. I recognize this yeah proper Isabella fabric the acrylic what we use on our traditional pole awnings and it's the acrylic material that we use even on our seasonal awnings so it's very long lasting the benefit of acrylic it's breathable so you're going to reduce the amount of condensation in the awning. And also the way we produce our acrylic material, it's all fibre dyed at source. So the colour runs all the way through, like you've known for 60 odd years on Isabella. So it's very long lasting material on the side and the front walls. Using the air arc, which is exactly the same fabric as this, mm -hmm. I can absolutely guarantee that the condensation is down to a minimum. But the biggest benefit is cleaning it and keeping yeah, it clean yeah. and maintaining its look and feel. I must admit, I, we've had plenty of awnings now and this fabric by far outperforms all the others because mm -hmm. it's just so easy to, to wipe off any bird muck, yeah. um, food stains or whatever, or mud from the bottom. You know, it's just so much easier to keep clean. And when you put it down and you're cleaning things like tree sap, yeah. personally, that's what I feel from this fabric yeah. alone. And this, this design on the Cirrus as well, it's, different it's unique it's very similar to our penta uh, full awning with the canopy all the way around people think it's just for design but there are also benefits of it obviously this is easier to clean and you you don't mind this getting as dirty you want to try and keep your front uh, clean and tidy and that just protects it there if it's raining or anything like that because you've got the deep canopy you can still open your front panel here still get some and it's still covered by the rain. So there's loads of different reasons why we design things the way we do. Yeah, excellent. Okay, let's nip inside and let's have a look at some of the features inside. Yep. Yeah. For me, the biggest problem with um, air awnings, um, porch awnings, is getting the actual awning to sit against the caravan. Mm -hmm. That part there to make it weather tight, air tight, windproof. Yeah. For me, in every awning, there's always been some unique way in doing it. I recognise this from the Ventura I had a couple of years ago. Let's just go through exactly how we seal this awning against this caravan. Yep, so it's the same with our polled porch awnings. It's, because it's not a full awning, it's not in the rail, you're always going to have that, that trouble or that, that problem. So how we've done it on the air awnings, like you said with the Ventura, we've got the air tube at the back. And this is actually not part of the main system. So the main air, uh, air awning itself is all single inflation, all connected. The two tubes at the back are just by themselves. So they've got a separate valve underneath and that'll be the last thing that you do. So you, what you want to do, you want to peg the awning out, peg it underneath the caravan as far as you can, um, and then simply inflate that at the end. And you do not need a lot of air in it. Okay. It is a full tube, but because these can also go onto motorhomes, which might have a, a blind, so you need a, a bigger gap to fill, all you want to do is sort of create a cushion with that air tube. So just a small amount of air okay. and fill the gaps. So what we've done here is we've actually created a problem which is fairly common in that the awning doesn't quite clear the window. Yeah. So if you wouldn't mind, we'll get the pump and we'll just show how this system works. Yeah. Yeah. So like you've said, with any uh, caravan and a porch awning, although we go and measure uh, the caravans to see how our porch awnings will fit, eight times out of 10 nowadays, you're going to hit a window or a locker. Lockers aren't a massive issue because they're quite flat. But as you can see here, the window is coming out, which is then causing the awning to come out and you're getting a gap at the top and the bottom. Yeah. The good thing about your air awning with the air tube at the back, if you just slightly unpeg it quickly on that one corner there, is simply just put a small amount of air into this rear tube. And you don't need a huge amount because the more air you put in it, the more it's gonna force you away from the caravan. 
we're just going to sort of make it into a, a cushion it's not a huge amount that really is quite a small amount i mean that yep. looks i mean that looks completely under inflated under inflated which is sort of what you want to do because then once you re-peg it what that sort of done it sort of created a cushion to then fill in the gaps okay around the window and like you say it's not a huge amount of air but it's just enough to go around that window and sort of create a seal it's never going to be a hundred percent on any porch awning whether it's an air awning or a pole awning you can add extra poles here on the cirrus if you really want to but that's just more to give that support but just having that air tube there with your draft skirt in that's going to create the best seal you can on a porch awning okay so another thing i want to talk about and we mentioned it outside but let's just talk about this fabric in here because anybody who's owned an isabella will recognize this design instantly yep, yep that's the isabella roof that we've used for many many years and we've brought that from the traditional pole awnings onto the air awning and what we've also done as you can see in the roof you've got two light panels which is originally we brought in on sort of your penta awnings because of the depth is a uh, is three and a half meters and yeah. with the depth of this being 2.75 we added the light panels in the roof just to make it a lot airier inside. Sure. Now, something that's caught my attention um, is the uh, valves at the top here and the obviously the air tubes. Yeah. So let's just get a little bit closer on that and let's just talk about what all this actually means. Okay. So, so first the valves. So because it's, although you've got three points to inflate uh, and three points to deflate, it's all single inflation. So you can pump up from one point. And we always recommend the center just so it comes into the middle and then works its way out. Yeah. And these valves here basically are just connecting all the tubes together. As you can see, you've got on, so where it lines up with the gray, and off. Most of the time, we'll always keep them on, so then when you are pumping them up, uh, when you come to the next time, and when you take it down, it's all together. But the reason you have got it off, if, if for any reason you do have a problem with one of the tubes, you can isolate that tube. So you can turn it off here, and at the other end and that will isolate this tube so worst case scenario if it's at night time or you can't get a tube replacement straight away then you can isolate that and still potentially use the awning with a, a makeshift so sort of cross member saying that it's very rare that the air tubes do go um, so our, our tubes are tested up to 16 psi although we recommend anywhere between nine nine and a half psi when you're actually pumping the awning up so right. there is room for uh, expansion and everything like that. So they're very hard wearing tubes. Okay. okay. On the Magnum, which I've been using for some time now, the zip comes down here. Yeah. It doesn't follow the profile of that, although it would be nice if th that followed the profile. Why have you now changed direction now and put the zip in line with that tube as opposed to in line with the window? So the main reason for that, you can buy additional annexes, left hand and right hand. So they are sided. And the idea of that is if you are using an annex, you can take the panel out and because you've got the height, you can use that as extra living space rather than just a sleeping area or storage area, which is what you'd have on your traditional awnings. So if you add that, you could even add one either side and that gives you a massive area um, of room that you can use. The one that we have for the Magnum is there and literally yep. you have to bend down and it is it. literally storage. Yeah. It's, it's not storage or space. sleeping, yeah. Um, we were thinking about using it as a bed room for for chloe in the mm -hmm. summertime but you know it's it's not that big yeah that's perfect that makes perfect sense and you're so, getting two and a half meters extra so if, if you imagine this awning is four meters you could take this away for a weekend and then if you're going away for two three weeks at a time you could then add an annex on or two annexes and, that, and that's giving you a lot more room so that's two and a half meters that way yep and how big is it because it's right from the end here where it meets two and a half that way as well so it's two and a half square so oh, an extra wow. yeah that's fantastic in terms of carpets then, mm -hmm. for the extension, is there a separate carpet for that or is there yep. one carpet that would run throughout? No, so we do separate carpets for both. So again, for the reason if you're only using this for a weekend or you only want to use the awning and then an annex uh, on a different holiday, you've got two carpets. Okay. Um, Let's just talk about the pros and cons of an air awning. Mm -hmm. In my mind, air awnings are heavier than pole awnings. Yep. And that was very much evident when we put it up earlier on today. Um, it took two of us to put it up. I know that you're a fit, young, healthy, young individual and you can do it yourself. But the reality is, if you've got two people, yeah. you're going to take, do it two people. Especially getting it into the rail, that's always easier with two people. You can have one feeding it in, one pulling it. Um, I always find putting an awning up, whether it's pulled or air, once it's into the rail, I always like to do it myself. Yeah. That's just how it is, but I'm doing it every day. <clears throat> but yes, you are right. An air awning, because it's all in one, one unit, you haven't got a canvas and poles. 
it's all together, it is going to be heavier when you're actually getting it into the rail. Yeah, okay. Um, let's have a chat about this. Yep. The pump. Um, looks pretty familiar to the one I have on the canopy, um, but it is a slightly improved design. A few different features on it. Obviously, you've got your gauge at the top there where we've discussed you want to try and get between nine and nine and a half PSI. Right. Um, you've got single and double action. So obviously that is like a normal air pump up and down if you want to, goes up a bit quicker. But the unique feature about our pump, you've got two settings. So this setting here looks like your standard air pump. But what you've got, the button on the side here, and this will take it to your max setting. And what's that, what that's doing is increasing diameter, getting a lot more air into the awning a lot quicker, a bit harder to do. But initially, when you first pump it up, go on to the max setting, and then once you get close to the PSI, you can pop it back to the smaller diameter just to get the last little bit of air into it because it's a bit easier to do. Let's just talk about the PSI and let's talk about pumping because yeah. something that somebody mentioned earlier on today is that um, you, you're saying 9 PSI. When's the best time to actually measure that? Is it on the downstroke? Yeah, on the downstroke. So the dial will only work on your downstroke. So right. you'll see it pop up and then it will come back down as you're, you're going back up. So on your downstroke, have a look and it will just pop up to that required okay. PSI. That's fine. And so 9 PSI is absolutely fine, even in hot weather like it is today. Yeah, so like we've mentioned, the actual tubes themselves are tested to 16 PSI. So you have got room for expansion okay. um, in the awning. If it is really, really hot, maybe not what we always get in the UK, you can drop it down a bit. Maybe down to 7 PSI, that's still going to be hard enough. Yeah. But really 9 PSI, you should be okay. Fantastic. You've just let the three valves out. But you haven't taken the pegs out? No, so I always tend to find if you take the, or release the air first, then go out around and unpeg. Obviously it depends on weather conditions and whether you can do that. Uh, but it just gives a, the, the awning chance to release the air a bit more while you're taking it out. So then when you come to fold it, it's got a lot of the air out already. Right, so what's the technique then? We're going to get it all outside facing down. Yeah, so you want everything on the roof, basically. Obviously, we're using a tarp here, but that's where you want, that's going to have a lot of the, the dirt and the muck on it. So if you put it onto the roof, when you're putting a clean awning all in together, yep. it's keeping the clean to clean dirt on the outside, okay. if there is any dirt. And what you want to try and do with any awning is create a square. Another little tip or trick, some people do it, some don't, even different people at Isabella. So as you've got the front panels here, Yeah. You just slightly unzip that front panel. Okay, you yes. Make it a bit easier to make it into a square. So it's sort of keeping it separate to the side panels. Got ya. So that's the front two corners? Yep. Got ya. Yeah. Air awnings are slightly different to how we would fold a pole awning. Okay. Because you've got the valves. So usually I'd fold in and go from the beading end and fold this way. But because as you can see, the valves are there, we're gonna do it slightly different. So we're gonna fold it onto, into thirds. Right. Let me help here. Yeah. And again. So usually, like I say, we'd use the beading and work our way that way. But because the air is going to be coming out of that hole there. Are you going to roll from that side? We're going to go from this end. Okay, let me get the bag. As you can see. Okay, yeah. slightly even here. Bit, bit of the last bit of air coming out of the awning. And like you do with any air awning, have a quick sit on it. So we, we, I don't know if you do that, but we put the bag on upside down over the top of it. Yep, and, and then, then roll, roll it over. Roll it over. Not yeah. like that. And you can zip it up. The good thing is you've got two bags. So one for the main canvas, and then one for all your accessories, curtains, uh, your pump, draft oh, yeah. skirt, pegs, everything. So this one here is just... Just for the awning. Just for the awning. Perfect. There you go. Excellent. I thought I'd just film this bit just before we take it down, which you've already seen, and just let you know what we're going to do with this awning next. I've agreed with uh, Isabella, I'm going to borrow this awning for the summer, and I'm going to give a living review, let you know how I get on with it on a couple of holidays upcoming in the summer holidays. The reason for bringing this up now is that if you have any questions or comments or anything like that about this awning and you want to know more information, 
put your comments in this video down below and then I'll look at it and then I'll see if I can answer those questions whilst we're away with it in the summer. Because it's Isabella and because it's their premier product, obviously it's not a cheap investment, but it's one investment that you need to make and it will last you for years and years, as every single Isabella owner will probably testify to. So that's it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do hit the subscribe button, hit the notification icon as well. And if you can do all of that, then hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Many thanks for watching everybody. Take care, bye-bye.